Today we'll be sitting down and chatting with an artist who's been working in glass for over 30 years. She has a style that is unique and all her own. She lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. She's a friend of mine. Her name is Allison Rusa. Nice to see you. Hi, Eric. Well, thank you so much for sitting and chatting with us today. I really, really appreciate this. Um, and uh, yeah, so how so how's uh, how's how's things going? You're what New York? Is that right? Yes, we're in Brooklyn here. That's wonderful. Right by the uh, Statue of Liberty. That's wonderful. Which you can't see really out the window today, or I would show you, but it's so foggy. Yeah. Well, everything is picking up again in New York, or is it still kind of slow? It's kind of slow here still. I mean, we're, uh, like the rest of the country, we're all dealing with the same thing. Sure, sure. Well, I appreciate you again, you know, sitting down with us, and, uh, and I think that uh, everybody will be so happy to see from you and get an update and just kind of you know, get to know you a little bit more. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit how you got into glass and how you became an artist? Well, um, we could blame my brother for that. My brother was a stained glass artist to begin with. And uh, I kind of stumbled on the fact that there were glass blowing classes and sent him like, hey, you should try this. And then he was like, hey, you should try this. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the short answer on that. I see. Um, it was a family. A family. So, so did you kind of start in like high school or college or even? No, I was already, I was in art. I was in college. I was an art major mm -hmm. at the time. It was like 1980 something. Neat. Neat. And uh, what college? What school? I went to the University of Cincinnati. College of Design, Art, Architecture, and Planning. Oh, wonderful. Did you start off just blowing, like, did you start off blowing or casting, or what kind of glass did you first get into, or was it, uh, like, stained glass, like what your brother was doing? No, I was doing uh, blown glass, and uh, I was just, to begin with, I just sort of experimented with different things, you know? Sure. You, like, you start with what you start with is a a tumbler, like a, a vase. And, most yeah. people start by trying to make something like this. Yeah. Neat. Very and cool. I have to say, the first one that I ever made, I kept that for years. It finally broke like two or three years ago. Oh, no, that's terrible. Well, that's <laughs> but I was so proud of myself because the first one I made, you could actually drink out of, and I drank out of it for years. Wow. So. so what what brought you the paperweights? Um, I mean, when did you kind of make that jump over or, or was it always kind of in the back of your head and something you're always kind of... Well, it's always been in the back of my head in a, in a, in a childhood fantasy kind of a way. I always wanted to make paperweights. Um, I remember having a long uh, discussion with my father one time about how just because I could buy a paperweight for a dollar at the Pier 1, mm -hmm. I was never going to make a living at it. And he explained that to me. There would always be somebody who could make it cheaper in some foreign country. <laughs> um, but clearly I did not listen to my father because I did pursue a, a career in glass. Well, that's and uh, I've done very, you know, I've done a lot of various things over the years. Um, the technique that I use to make the paperweights now is a technique that I've used um, for over 25 years to make larger work. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, the paperweights to begin with were always like sort of little experiments that didn't go all the way, but I didn't want to throw them away. So I grind them and sell them as paperweights. And then they started as, you know, kind of take on a life of their own. No. Now your paperweights are, they're, they're different than kind of the typical paperweight that we think of, you know, usually we think of Millefiore or Flamework, but you do something a little 
very different, actually. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of paperweights you specialize in and what that technique yeah, is? Yeah, I do. Um, my, my very first glass blowing class, when they asked me what I wanted to do, I showed him a picture of Paul Stankard's work and said, uh, how do you do this? Right. Well, like, I know mine won't be this pretty, my first one, but I want to try this. And they said, oh, we don't have any of the things that you need to try that here. Hmm. Um, so I tried some other things and uh, I ended up taking a paint, a class about how to use these paints, which uh, they no longer make these paints anymore, but um, it wasn't a different way for me to get the images in without having the equipment that you need to, to do like a Paul Stankard style thing. Sure. And I just enjoyed the technique of painting so much that by the time I was actually in a position where I could flame work parts, like for instance, I can't flame work parts. <laughs> Here's a whole dish of them. Um, when I got to the point where my skill level was that I could do that, I didn't really, it was no longer my desire because I always felt like Paul Stankard would always do a better job than me and I'd never, ever catch up to him. Sure. Well, so it would be more of a personal growth and personal challenge for me to just do something that I never saw anybody do, yeah. which was use these paints in layers. So and and what solid. Do you do is, I mean, are, it's got to be like some sort of special paint. Like, what kind of like what kind of paint is it? And tell us. It is a, it's an enamel, like and yeah. enamels, by uh, definition, are made of glass. Right. So enamel is glass powder mm -hmm. floating in a medium. I see. In this case, uh, the medium is pine oil, which burns away in the process leaving behind just the glass okay so so you paint on the surface of a blank and then do you kind of uh do you put that in a kiln or do you put that in a glory hole first well, or, well yeah i start with something like this just a blank solid piece of glass and uh then i paint on it mm -hmm. so here's one that's painted on Okay. And in this case, the paint is still on the outside. I'm actually touching the surface of the paint now. So this is just, it hasn't been heated, heat treated or anything at that point though? No, no. If I wanted to, I mean, that one's been sitting on the shelf just for so long, mm -hmm. even throughout the summer, it's kind of partly baked on anyways, but with just a little bit of paint thinner, anything on there that I decide like even months later, I don't like the way that looks. Mm -hmm. I can take it off. All any, you know, of course, until I put more glass on top. I see. But once it goes through that stage, it does, it goes into a little oven over here, mm -hmm. um, upside down like that on a brick. Mm -hmm. I have uh, bricks that are all sort of carved out with a little divot in them so that it can sit like this. And I slowly warm it up to about a thousand degrees, mm -hmm. pick it up on the end of the pipe, flash it in the glory hole over there. Yeah. Um, just enough to, to melt that glass. The, end of the medium is burnt. Like there, most of the medium burns out in the oven. Okay. And you know, I, I vent the oven so that it, you know, wafts away or whatever. Mm -hmm. But just to make sure it's really cooked on there we flash it in the glory hole. Okay, interesting. And then we get another gather a glass on top of it. And then it looks something like this. Wow. So here, let me get my head out, blocking the sunshine there. And I'll, I'll put but, some images up so that we can all get some yeah. better idea later on. But this now, you can see the paint is on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so now I have a whole nother surface to paint on. Absolutely. Wow. So and I have to build this up larger and larger and larger and make it more and more. Right. And normally with the paperweights, I stop at two layers. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's like pretty much a nice shape to hold in your hand. Sure. I don't like for them to be so big that a person isn't comfortable, like, kind of, you know, because I know y'all like to love them. Yeah. Um, but I do make much larger ones that I could show you later on. Or How many or how large have you gotten out in this process? How many layers? Well, I, I got a really ginormous one right behind me. Mm-hmm. We're making it work today, Allison. There you go. <laughs> but I don't know how well you could see that on the camera. Wow. You can see by the size of my hand how huge it is. Right, yeah, it's got to be what, 10 inches across or so? Yeah. Um, it's a little bit less than 10 inches, I know, because the door to the furnace is 10 inches. Ah, so yes, that's the limiting factor. <laughs> but it has to fit through the door. Yeah. But it might be a little bit more than 10 inches, because, you know, then I smunched it around a little bit after it came out. Sure. But that's about as big as I've gone. Okay, that's neat. Um, that's neat. And if you want, I can send you a photograph of it or something. Yeah, maybe. I'd love to see it, absolutely. So, but yeah, that's got like four or five layers on it, and it's carved on the bottom. Wow. They can get pretty much more elaborate than a paperweight. What kind of, um, I guess what's your like process? Like what's your, do you, do you sit down with a, do you sketch something out ahead of time with like an idea that you have, or do you just kind of get I don't, I don't kind of, usually. Okay. I draw a lot. I have sketchbooks everywhere. Mm -hmm. But my drawings have almost nothing to do with this. Uh -huh. It's for me, it's a completely different art form and another process. Right. When I do this, I just um, sometimes I have an idea, something that I'm thinking about, some challenge that I want to take on. Like, is, these are some um, sycamore trees. Mm -hmm. Sycamore trees are really hard to paint because they have so many different little, I don't know how well you could see that, but so many different um, colors and textures. Oh, right. Yeah. And so you have to um, build that up over time. And and I noticed also well, that a lot well, of- I just have a, like a different, you know, sometimes I have an idea in my head that's like as basic as, okay, sycamore tree. Right. Or, what do you think is the most challenging pro part of your work? I mean, what, uh, you know, each, each art form has its challenges and its rewards. For, for you, what do you find, you know, most challenging and most rewarding about what you do? That's a good question. Um, you know, challenging, it's glass. So everything about it, this particular process has got like 20 different steps. Sure. From like making the first blank, sitting down and painting it, all the different. So because it has so many steps, the most challenging part is to make it from point A to the end mm -hmm. without like, oh, step 12, we messed up. That one's, you know, we got a lot of those. That happens a lot. Um, just, and, and anything can go wrong because there's so many different glass is just so unpredictable and kind of hard to well it's kind of predictable on a certain level but on another level you know it's glass you could break it it's really easy to mess it up sure and it's technically uh it takes a long time to learn how to work with it mm -hmm. i think how to how it moves what it does what it's what its limitations are um so I, I think as, as far as a medium goes, it's very, it's much more complicated than if I were to just get out of canvas and paint on that instead. Sure. For how long, how long, approximately how many years have you been working in glass and hot glass? Mm, it's been, I'm not gonna be as for more than half my life. Yeah. So, 10 years. 
<laughs> or a little more. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I see you are in your studio today. You mind just kind of like showing us around a little bit and kind of yeah, talking sure, about it? It's a really beautiful place. My my little space is like a New York apartment. It's very tiny. What well, is New York? I'm trying to show you around a little bit. This is the table where I sit and do my painting. Um, and uh, here's a shelf with some other stuff, supplies and whatnot. Here's my favorite apron. <laughs> Um, here's a bunch of pieces that are all in various states of being finished. Most of them are either finished and waiting to get shipped out or waiting to be cold worked. Wow, interesting. So I can uh, show you a few of those a little bit closer later. Um, that's the excitement of see how tiny my space is. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we've already left the zone. Like by 10 or less? All yeah, that people work comes into that space? <laughs> it's a little bit less. Than, it's like an 8 by 10. Yeah. Um, but it's in this ginormous room. Wow. Um, which is an old warehouse. And see, we got ovens. Over here is the, the hot shop. There's the furnace. So you share this space with multiple artists or, or how does that work? I do. Um, oh wait, you gotta see, we got, we also have, it's all covered up right now, but just to, uh, uh, where'd you go? I'm here. I lost the picture. I see you, you must have. Uh, okay. Just, there you are. Well, so as long as you could still see, it doesn't matter. There's my lamp working department. It's all covered in plastic right now. <laughs> and... I love those, uh, those old stone walls. Yeah, this is a um, Civil War era warehouse. Wow. Oh, look, you can see the statue a little bit. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. There you go. It's starting to clear up out there. So as you can see, we're right there in the New York Harbor. It's nice to be right there on the water. Mm -hmm. And over here is the cold shop. Because things don't just come right out of the, the hot shop all shiny and perfect. <laughs> so these are all the, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. Oh, the grinding and polishing wheels. Yeah. Anyways, there's a quick tour of the studio. Very cool. Thank um, you. And I share it with uh, several other people. Um, I want to see where did you guys go? Where did you go? I see you. Yeah, I can't see you at all, and that's kind of disturbing. I just have like a giant zoom. Oh, there it is. There you are. Yeah. I'm here. Huh. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. We never really <laughs> left, though. <laughs> studio. Um, yeah, so, I shared this with a bunch of other glass artists. And everybody just kind of rents space and or, or time, or how does it work? kind of works out a little bit like that. You know, different people have their own little spot where they sit. Um, and then there's the main hot shop and the cold shop and we share those and. For how long has this space been a, um, a, hot, a hot shop or a, a glass studio? Well, that's not a good question. I'm really bad at keeping track of time <laughs> like that. It's like 1993 or something in this space. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the, what's the um, name? Or 1990, see I'm bad at this. We had another space in a building just like this, but a different space for about eight years. And then we moved to this one. So we've been like an entity, like all working together as friends and a studio since about 1993, 94. 
Okay. All right. Very neat. And we've been in this space for, I don't know, a really long time. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever like collaborate with one another there or do anything together? Or just... Yeah, I think we all sort of depend on each other for, yeah. for things, you know. Um, I can't do my work without a partner. I mean, I can some parts of it, you know. I don't really need anybody to sit here while I paint. Um, but when I'm in the hot shop, I like to work with somebody else. It's easier, especially if I'm working on something larger. Mm -hmm. um, so we always work together that way. Um, sometimes they're working on a big project and I might do some cold working for them or jump into the hot shop with them. Um, other people come through here and do projects. They might hire you to do a part of their project. Sure. So a lot of different things go on that way as well. What is it? I mean, I know that what other kind of work do you do uh, besides paper? I know that artists are always, they always have something going on other than, than what one group, you know, for me, you know, I know you for paperweights, but do you also do other, other types of work also? It's, well, else? like I mentioned, there are larger pieces that I make that are, I mean, I guess you guys may maybe call that a doorstop or something when they get huge like that. Sure. Um, but I don't really think of them as paperweights per mm -hmm. se. Um, I also have experimented with other technique, other techniques in glass. I'll show you. Got some. This is all um, engraved. I don't know how well you can see that. Is it engraved on a mirror, or is it just a piece of glass? Or is it? It's engraved, and then it's been mirrored. I see. So I learned both those processes to do this, because I learned how to do the engraving. Mm -hmm. And then I learned how to, to actually do the original old school technique of mirroring I with like the silver and all. It's, it takes really complicated. Um, but so I've done a whole series of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, last summer, I spent a month in Italy oh. with a, a friend of mine who... Um, we started making glass around the same time and we used to always sell at the same gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had never had the opportunity to, to work on anything together. Mm -hmm. So I went to her place and and she taught me how to do her technique, which in some ways you get like a very similar product. Wow. So is that paint too, or, or how is, what is it? How is that done? So the girl in there is paint mm -hmm. and the trees and everything else is all done with powders and like stringers, same, uh, like you have to lamp, lamp working involved. Yeah. Um, so the trees are made with like, you make all the parts of the lamp work, but then you lay them down on here instead of put, you don't put it together. You lay it down and you tack it together with glue and then you fuse it together in an oven. Oh, wow. Um, now this was one of my designs that we did That's while, cool. while I was there. If you could see it, it's very similar to me, but it's a different technique. And this is one of her designs that we did for me to learn the technique. You can see it's a very different kind of design. So I've seen pictures of it. It's much larger than I expected, but it's really, really neat. It's really neat. Um, but yeah, something like this takes a, takes the whole month to make. Wow. wow. Um, so do you do multiple firings on something like that? And kind of build up the picture? Yeah, there's probably 10 or 12 firings on that one piece. Wow, interesting. And there's another one that we did. But it's still kind of within the paperweight size. You know, it's... Uh, it's as big uh, as my head. Yeah, it's neat. It's really, really neat. Um, but it's, it's just another, uh, another technique to try 
to get the imagery within the glass, which has always been my, my goal was to, you know, to be able to put my imagery in here. What do you think it is about that? You know, that's kind of the, the common thread with, with paperweights and, and, and related arts, that imagery inside the glass. What do you think it is about, about that? Um, you know, that's a good question. Art? I do not know. For me, for me, what it became and was not my, I mean, like the original intention, you know, you're in art school, you're trying things and you're like, ooh, you look through a magazine. I liked what Paul was doing, thought it was beautiful or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately what it became as I went through was that the glass became the space in the painting. The glass. So most paintings you have to you have to fudge to make it look like there's space. Whereas with this, the space actually exi exists. Sure. And it for me it makes it a way that beyond the space it makes it so that you can now take this painting which you can move around. Normal painting is just flat. You see it from that one point of view. Mm -hmm. With with my work, my my goal is that it's a, it's a painting that you could turn and move around in, and you see you see something from the front, and you turn it around. Now you see it from the back. Right. It's immersive um, in a way that no other. Yeah. It's it's uh, no other no other even in in the paperweight world no other. Um, there's no other technique like it. It really is incredibly immersive and you get a completely different, you know, Alison's work with her work, you get a completely different take on it every time you pick it up and look at it. Cause it's, you know, it's completely 360 degree. It's just, it's just really amazing. Well, I think you can get a different take on other paperweights too. I mean, I think that's one of the fascinations, especially with the Mila Fiore ones is that, you know, every time you pick it up, you see a new little, something that you love about it sure. um but yeah i think for me that became that became a big part of my goal was to make sure that like it looks good and it keeps looking good no matter how you turn it and you things will get hidden on purpose so that you won't see it until you turn it around the other way right. i wanted to to be someplace where you can constantly discover and and as best as you can sort of walk through the painting. Yeah. All right. What kind of work are you doing recently other than, is there anything else you're excited about or anything that's, uh, that's new? Well, I'll, some, I'll show you some of my new pieces. Let's see if we can get the, um, get this set up in a way that you'll be able to see them a little better. Now my desk is a mess again because I kept pulling things out for you. <laughs> I actually no painted. Um, right now, here I'm. Here's some pieces that I'm working on as a collaboration with. Can you see that? We see it. Yeah. So that's a. I almost feel like it would be better if I had my phone. If we were zooming on the phone, I could zoom in. Um, I some pieces okay. I'm working on with, uh, can you zoom in? I'll be able to put some pictures on later for us. So some here's some pieces I'm working on. I don't know if you can see inside there, how well you can see inside there, but right in the middle of there is a bouquet of flowers by Kathy Richardson. Wow. So this is a collaboration that I've done with her where she, she's done the interior. I see, yeah. Really. And then I've painted on the outside of it. So does Kathy do the, in, does she encapsulate the, the lamp work or are you encapsulating the lamp work or how does- so We know, did a little explore? experiment in Flint, Michigan where where she had a lamp work thing and I had a painted thing and we smunched them together. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about ways we could do it better. So what she does now is she sent me this. She sends me something like this. I see. 
with she's already encased with her her goodies inside and a nice lot of glass on the outside of it where I can paint. I see. Um, so yeah, we've we've done like three or four of these together so far. Um, and I really like how they're starting to come out. This one still needs to be cold worked on the bottom. But you know, they're really kind of interesting, the, the combination of the 2D and the 3D and the kind of details that you can get with the two different techniques. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a, a fun challenge trying to figure out. It's, it's like that game that you play in high school where your friend draws like half a drawing and then passes it to you and you add your part. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah. That's so really that's kind of fun. That's fun. Um, I also have this big guy that I've been working on. This one. Wow, that one's huge. Is a uh, full forest in there, really. The jungle. Yeah. Um, you can see the palm leaves and whatnot. And I think that's what I I'm going to call it. I think it's going to be called It's a Jungle. Um, this is a very special piece. This piece is for um, the museum at Wheaton Village. Oh, okay. That's great. Wonderful. So I just just finished that one up. Just finally got photographs of it. So that's going to be ready to go out soon. Yeah, I know that you do a lot of custom work for artists and art for collectors and and uh, and they really just cherish your work and, and well it's a fun challenge i like to uh, i like to include people in their work mm -hmm. um and so i do do a lot of commissions that do involve um portraits for you know i mean it's not like a portrait like portrait like like annie leibowitz or anything but they're like memories they're like little memories yeah yeah, and I try to capture their personality either in a silhouette or a sort of a cartoonish version of them. Um, so yeah, that's what's that's what's going on over here. I've been working on a few different things. This one is going to be uh, this one is uh, a I uh, feel like I keep having to put my head in, in far in front of the spot like that. This one is a, uh, like a redwood forest. Oh, right. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's neat. It's hard to get, it must be hard to get all those proportions right within the glass and, 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 uh, to fit it all in there. But, uh, but you do it. Well, the tricky thing about it is that because it gets magnified by the shape of the glass, mm -hmm. if you make, if you make it square, um, then none of that matters almost. Yeah. It matters from the inside to the outside, but, but very slightly depending on how many layers you have. Mm -hmm. If you make it square, sure. then all that, all that lensing goes away. Wow. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I tend to paint outside scenes. Mm -hmm. um, because then it doesn't matter if the tree looks bigger over there than it did over it. here. It's a yeah. tree, they could be any size. <laughs> that's, that's a good way of thinking about it. I never, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you do have to think about that. Sometimes you, you mean, you don't want like a little tiny dog on the other side of the piece. Then when you turn it around, he's like Cujo. Yeah, it must be, yeah. You have to, you really must have to train yourself to kind of think how it's going to be, how, it, how the glass is going to change things. So. Yeah, it's all part of the, um, the layout, so to speak, yeah. is that it, it needs to still read properly, right. even if things are out of, a little out of proportion. That's neat. Well, thank you so much for sitting with us and, you know. Well, thanks for, yeah. uh, thanks for calling. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We should, uh, you know, we should, we should catch up again sometime in the future and yeah, make it, uh, make, maybe make it a regular thing, but. Uh, okay. It's been a lot of fun and uh, 
if anybody has any questions about anything, you know, you can just post it in the comments below. And I'm sure that either Allison or I will get a hold of you in the future. And uh, and thank you again, Allison. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Take care. See ya.